Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to day four of my trip to Scotland and now I'm on the Isle of Skye and as you can probably see here behind me where we've come to is the iconic old man of Store. Now we're here for sunrise, sun has risen, has risen, it's around five minutes past sunrise but as you can see there isn't much of an opportunity for light to be able to hit those currently because they're shrouded in cloud but I am seeing a small bit of colour now as well coming from the east so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of shots anyway here going up and looking in this direction i am going to go higher um eventually i mean like this hike took me around maybe 40 45 minutes to get here and i had to stop a number of times as well because i layered up probably too much actually when we left the van it was freezing cold and a lot of wind but as i was coming up there was no wind and of course with the temperature of myself and carrying my gear and everything else i found it quite warm so i've actually taken off my uh, rain jacket now but i do feel some rain drops so i imagine it'll be going back on again uh, pretty shortly but with the shot that we have here i think with this one i might get a nice bit of light if it can hit it from here because by the time i get hiking up to here i'll probably miss it if there is any light anyway so that's what we're doing today uh, i'll grab a couple of shots anyway here and you can join me again when we're a bit higher up towards the iconic viewpoint of the old man of store. Well, the light show I just had there was absolutely beautiful. The sun broke the clouds earlier and I got some beautiful direct light as well up onto the spires that are behind me. Now what I'm doing at the moment here is I'm shooting a time lapse and that time lapse has been running for around about the last 10 minutes, not long after the sun had broke. So I think I'm gonna get some beautiful light on the uh, spike that's here. And then with the clouds going around it as well, I think it's gonna be absolutely phenomenal. So now it's time for me to take that hike and go up this pathway here and then up to the guys who are above here and I can hear Dermot shouting from here so I think he's happy as well with his images he got this morning it was beautiful light with the mist shrouding around that as well and catching the light was absolutely gorgeous <laughs> So I finally made it up to the viewing point. It was quite a long hike actually, and quite tough with all the camera gear. I uh, won't lie, I'm quite bait out. But I've just arrived now as the sun is coming back through the clouds and hopefully will light up these impressive stacks. They're actually huge. I didn't think they were as big as they are until you actually get up here, but yeah, the sunlight is coming out now, so I'm gonna grab that shot because it's only gonna be a fleeting moment. I think I got that shot now as the sun broke uh, through a gap in the clouds and it's gone behind some clouds now again but what we are getting is some beautiful crespicular rays that are going down across the, the bay on my left hand side, uh, my right hand side, your left hand side. Now um, with the fog still going around as well I think it's going to be beautiful to be able to get some shots here. It is an iconic spot and it does look absolutely fantastic. Now there's a gap above the clouds again here so I'm going to wait for that just hope that I can get another break in the light and then it'll light this up here as well with a beautiful glow. Settings at the moment actually I'm shooting at f11 uh, and I'm varying my um, shutter speed depending on if the light is there or not. 
and what I'm trying to do as well is to keep these similar to the frame that you're in there at the moment they're going to be in the top right hand corner and then you can just see down here there is some lovely light as well that's hitting some of the ridges below which is lighting it up as well very very nice so yeah really 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 good great start to the day even if I am shattered after getting up here and completely soaking from sweat because I was to totally wrapped up for the uh, cold like I said earlier on but yeah well worth the hike and I can see why it is an iconic spot I got treated to some beautiful light there a moment ago um, I started a time lapse which is almost finished now at the moment here and the old man store was in shade and now the Sun as you can see is coming back out again for a second time so I already got it the first time here when it lit up all of these and then the cloud more or less disappeared as well around the stacks it's a beautiful beautiful spot like I said earlier on you know great start to the day I think I've gotten some lovely shots as well. Dermot and Patrick actually went a bit further on up, but I decided to stay here and they got some pretty epic shots actually from what I've seen up on a higher ridge that's up there as well. Um, so yeah, if you haven't seen those shots, I'll give you a link here to Dermot's channel. You can check out his episode from today. No doubt he's recorded video as well from this stunning location. So I think that's our morning pretty much done now. The sun is going to be a bit too harsh, uh, not long from now. So I'm going to finish up this here on the morning and then we're going to continue on to our next location on day four on the Isle of Skye. It's the end of day four now and where I've come to is a place called Elgol which I'm here for sunset and it's my first seascape since arriving on the Isle of Skye. So after finishing uh, this morning in the old manor store we took the drive to come over here in the afternoon and then we just basically relaxed while the harsh light was there for the day. It was looking promising earlier on but now when I'm looking at the sky here there's a 50-50 chance of it actually going well. 
So we said we'd hang out, you know, we had some laughs, myself and Dermot and Patrick. And then I've now just literally finished a beautiful steak dinner that Dermot has cooked for us. So I've come over here now to this beautiful location. If you look behind me here, you can see some very, very impressive mountains that are on the other side. It's another island that actually lies off the coast here. So I'm going to take seascape shots. Was hoping that I get a bit more movement in the water, but the tide is going out and there's not much wave action. Now, what I am going to do is take a couple of different types of shots. I'll take my normal half a second, but I'll probably also take some long exposures as well, because with the water the way it is here, I still think I'm gonna get some nice shots by using my uh, 10 stop and also using my polarizer to be able to cut through any of the glare and to be able to see the colorful rocks that are here. Now, also, these rocks, are actually really really nice they're covered in little barnacles and also i don't know what they are but they're a small sea um, shell which makes it easy to walk across it has great grip but also i think it'll be very good and very interesting for the type of shot that i'm going to get with this so i'll get set up here now and once i find a composition i'll talk you through the type of composition i'm going to take in this absolutely beautiful location What I've noticed now here is that I would much prefer it if I had a bit more wave action and also because the water is going out there isn't going to be much except for the odd wave like this that will come through. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my 0.9 ND grad just to contain the sky which I hope is going to light but what I'm also doing here is going for my preferred time for seascape which is half a second and I'm waiting for a wave to come in here and to break before me. Now I'm using as well my polarizer because like I said earlier on, I really do like these rocks and there's a lot of detail in the rocks themselves. So by using the polarizer, I can cut through that glare and then I can see what lies beneath. But then with the water just breaking over on top of that, all of it, be it so delicately, delicately like this right now, it allows me to be able to capture at least a small bit of energy within the image for what is a relatively flat sea. Now, what I'm also going to do here next is I spotted another composition to the, your left where I can see these jagged rocks that are leaning out and there's some really interesting shapes that are within those and I'm hoping that I'll be able to frame the shot because that's going to form the left hand side of my image and I want the eye basically to go to these mountains that you see over here. At the moment the mountains are on the right hand side of the frame and I feel slightly imbalanced so I'm going to move over here to your left next and then we'll see can I compose the shot there. I'm going to keep with the uh, half a second for now and then we'll see if the light will actually kick off and if not then I'll go for a long exposure. So I've moved over here now to the left hand side and as I've moved over I'm using the um, wall like I said on the left hand side here. There is no real waves that are hitting here so this cove is kind of sheltered so there's no real action but what you are seeing is down into the water into the rocks that are below me. Now I'm still at my half a second which is my uh, preferred exposure time like what I said a moment ago and the clouds are looking really ominous there on the mountains in the distance and it's nice to be able to get that shot with the 0.9 ND grad. Now what I am going to do next is I'm going to throw on my uh, big stop and I'm going to do a long exposure because I really want to smooth out this water uh, totally and I want to kind of give that ether a look and feel. I think these rocks with the mountains in the background are strong from a composition point of view. So I'll pop that on, I'll show you this image anyway now and then we'll check back in when I've got my 10 stop on and I'll show you what that shot, how that's set up then.
Now, even though it's not near sunset yet, we probably run about 30 minutes to go. I've had to go up. I'm probably going to go around about six minutes in exposure. Now, my settings at the moment with the 10 stopper, my grad and also my polarizer, I'm at uh, f8. So I'm having a longer exposure, obviously, with the smaller aperture. But the light, I don't know if it's going to come or not. So I'm glad now that I've done the long exposure. And I've also moved because I noticed here in front of me, there's like a circle of large boulders that are there and by using the polarizer I can see through the water and that creates a nice framing in the base and then with these mountains in the distance here and also with the cloud that's sitting on the top left hand side of the mountain there I do think that it's a nice shot now that cloud obviously is going to be moving throughout the image so it's not going to be as uh, pin sharp let's just say as I'm looking at it right now but that's fine because I think that gives a very nice ether effect to the shot but also as you know from a long exposure point of view the image here will be completely flat and to be almost glass like so I'm at four minutes and 33 seconds at the moment I'm going to wait to get to get six and then hopefully that will be enough but I probably will have to as the light will fade then take off the 10 stopper and just adjust my aperture to still continue to get some bit of a long exposure probably not as long as this but I will get probably around a 30 second exposure and such like that, which I'm probably going to stay with because there is, as you can see, pretty much no action whatsoever within the water. So yeah, that's my next shot. I wait for this to finally cook and then I'll give you a look at this shot before we move on to hopefully, fingers crossed, to get some light here on Elgal. So all of the light that I'd hoped for didn't come, but I do think I did get some nice shots even with the detail that's in those clouds there. They're quite dramatic, which is the uh, word of the weekend and ominous according to uh, Dermot. So yeah, Dermot has just come back there. You know, he was over on the other side here, you know, being on his own and lonely, but I think hopefully he got a couple of nice shots as well. Uh, I was here and taking some shots and I was accompanied by a very nice man called Steve who was out to teach me a lot about photography and his trips around the world, who's actually cycling around the world as well. So it's been quite interesting to spend some time with him. And from this point here now, I don't think we're going to get anything further. So I am going to finish up on my end of fourth day on the Isle of Skye. Hopefully in the morning, and um, we might get another crack at this. Who knows? We'll see what the conditions are like. Uh, if the tide is coming in, which, you know, as I said from the outset, was a bit of a disadvantage with tide going out. But if the tide was coming in, might get some action of the waves that are here as well. But I doubt it because the sea has been quite calm. And there's actually been very little wind as well here this evening. But who knows? It might change. So thank you very, very much, as always, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the content on the channel. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Give me a like, give me a comment. And until the next time, Schlange gefunden.